Oh, there he is. So let, you look great, by the way. Let, let me uh, introduce him. He is the great Joe Ganiscoli. Uh, You know him, Vito, The Sopranos. He is uh, tremendous. He's a great actor, but he's a great sportsman. Look at that. Look, he's got the cigar. He looks fantastic. Joe, good morning, buddy. Anthony, what's going on, pal? It's been a while. I know, man. Look, you look good, man. What are you doing? You're working out, huh? I'm working out, playing ball, racquetball, pickleball, um, golf, started golf. And uh, I just ran out. It's raining, so I'm playing inside. I ran out. I go, I got to go see my man, Ant. That's fantastic. So we're having some fun because uh, Mets, Phillies, uh, it's the Union versus the Red Bulls. So we're having, and especially after the Sixers-Knicks series, we're doing FNY. So it's F New York week. And you're a great sportsman. You you are a number one New York sports fan. Well, there's a lot of number ones. You know, you got a lot of fake fans sitting in the front row. Uh, but there's a couple of real ones, you know? There's know. a couple of real ones. Yeah, but you actually, you love it. And I know you're really Yankees first. You love the Yankees. Yeah, well, it's, when I was a kid, it was Yankees. Now I, it's Giants, then Yankee Ranger, and then, you know, Knicks, uh, like, bottom of the, uh, you know, I like this Knicks team. I like the way they play. You know, for the most part, the early 2000s day was like, you know, three uh, bounces and put it up. But that wasn't my type of game. Yes. You know, how about Brunson? You know, by the way, you owe us because those three kids are all Villanova kids. So they're all from Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. And I think Hart was a big Sixer fan, right? He wanted to be a Sixer. He was yeah. pissed he was passed over. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We've screwed up royally. The perfect yeah. role player. Six, four and a half. And all the kid does, big H-E-A-R-T, big heart, who boards, rebound, and plays. I mean, you see, he played 48 minutes for you. I see him on the bench for like uh, three minutes. You're like, what's he doing there? Why, why is he out of the game? But, uh, you know, even a kid like that gets gassed. He's been unconscious. Jalen, I mean, that's probably one of the greatest uh, moves in New York sports history, getting him, you know? I know. I, I, I Listen, when he was in Dallas, I, I was like, wow, he's coming out of his own. And, and you know, he played at Villanova. We know his father, Rick Bronson, played at Temple and the whole thing. And, and I knew he was a good ball player, but I didn't expect him to be a star, like a true superstar. When they gave him that kind of contract, I'm thinking – Wow, that's, that's a hefty contract, a big role for him. But he's carried them. I mean, last night, I mean, that's an epic performance. Yeah, he was he was unconscious. He was unconscious. The whole team, even uh, Hartenstein, you know? I mean, what do you have, 12 offensive uh, rebounds? He tied a, a Nick record, I think, 17 total. Uh, it was a, really a, a team effort. And doing this without OG... Of course, Randall's been gone a lot, and um, who else is banged up? Someone else, I think. Uh, but they're just contributing, you know, off the bench. Precious is all well, Alec Burke. He didn't hear from him at all. They were saying that was a waste of a trade. They got him, uh, and he's come through. He's been having uh, some big baskets. So what, what's it been like this spring between the Knicks? And you're a, you're a Ranger man. Yeah, I'm a Ranger. Yeah, <laughs> Ranger. This Ranger team looks like they're for real. Uh, they had a little bump and roll. They came out really weak uh, the last game. I don't know. You know, Rempe was back in the lineup. I still think he should have just cracked somebody um, just to get the crowd going, but uh, and pump up the team. But they looked um, not ready to play. They were. I'm surprised because uh, uh, the coach gets them ready, and that was home. They should have wrapped it up. But you know. Carolina's a good coach team. Brenda Moore's a good coach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Former flyer, by the way, Rod Brenda Moore. <laughs> <laughs> you, you yes. know, I gotta get so that in So is so so Tockett <laughs> yeah. in Vancouver. Yes. yes. Well, we love Tockett. I mean, Tockett's one of our one of our guys, man. He'll always be a Philadelphian. The um the, and then yesterday, 
Aaron Nola owns City Field. Now, where the, now if you're a Yankee fan, I always say this: like, you're a Yankee fan, you really don't like the Mets. How do you how do you feel? I'm not like I said. They, they I always looked at them as like our little sisters. You know what I mean? They're a nice little cute team. Uh, they try. They almost get there. Most some once in a while they do, but uh, I don't hate them. You know, I don't hate the Jets. I don't hate the Nets. The uh, yeah, the Islanders, maybe. I don't know about the Islanders. But, uh, you know, there's only two teams I hate. You know that. Cowboys and Eagles. <laughs> well, right? football's your number one. Fo- fo- yeah. Now, like, you you love the Giants. I got to ask you. We have Saquon yeah. Barkley. Who? Ha- <laughs> Saquon, baby! Celebrate! Wait, wait. Duck end zone! I know. I know Charles and I know Iran. Who was the other guy? <laughs> wow, Iran Barkley, a great fighter. That's impressive <laughs> that you pulled that one out of. Look I, at I can go deep on you, man. I can go deep on you. Saquon. Uh, it's Listen, gonna be painful you, you to order, see. You but didn't you know, from a contract. People are people in New York are ripping him for being disloyal. You didn't offer him a deal. What's he supposed to do? <laughs> No, I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, he wanted to stay a giant. They didn't give him the money. I got it. He moved on. You hate to see him playing for the Eagles. If he turns out to be another Boston Scott, I'll kill you. Know, I'll kill myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> now we finally got rid of him, and now you got Saquon. So we'll we'll see. But, um, you know, it is what it is. I will say this about the Eagles, because they've overtaken the Cowboys as the number one team I hate. But Howie Rose... It's Howie Rose or Roseman? Howie, Ro- yeah, Howie Roseman. Howie Rose, Roseman. in fact, was he the broadcaster for the Mets. <laughs> yeah, he's the broadcaster. For, he was the broadcaster. Yeah. Now he, oh, he still is. He still is. He used to do Iron Man too. Yeah. Howie Rose, right? No, Howie Roseman. He's a uh, he. He's a good GM, man. Yes. He's a good GM. He's a great. He GM. really is. I mean, he's a great GM. He's a great GM. He pulls these guys out and does these deals, and you know. Hopefully, uh, A.J. Brown backfired on him. I was hoping he was the cancer that, you know, uh, maybe they fixed that. I don't know. He don't care. We got, he's got a new deal. He's happy. Now, what, yeah. what about your pick? How could you stay with Daniel Jones? Right? You have, you're right there at five. You can reshape your franchise. With two. With two. Well, the three guys, Daniels, Drake, and uh, Williams were gone. So what were they going to do? Reach? Well, I mean, you could trade up. I mean, it would cost you. Pricey, it, it, but. It, was, it was Malik Neighbors all along. But I love Daniel Jones. The kid, I now, I realize this now, that he just might be injury prone. And not only that, he's coming off two tough injuries with the neck as a bed for a quarterback. It's not good. So I love Jones. The desire to be great. You know, um, he works at it. He He's not – if he could just stay healthy, I think he would, uh, you know, turn people and say, you know what, uh, thanks for believing me. But be that as it may, that's who we got. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I just never saw – I never bought him as a thrower. Like, he was a good athlete, you know, but just throwing the ball down the field, I just uh, hate he the way the they throws. built that thing. He can make the throws. See, he can make the throws. I've seen guys that, you know, have a rough time, but um, he can make the throws. He's got a good arm. He's got, you know, he's faster and a stronger arm than Eli, but Eli was magical. Uh, Eli we knew, understood the position. Like, Eli was, you know, well, he was magical. That's a, that's a great way to put it. What's but, the. N- but, uh, but, but wait, wait, hold on. They yeah. got on Eli too, you know, with the deer in the headlights, you know what I mean? And, you know, he had some rough moments too, but when, uh, you know, he had some bad playoff games, but really, uh, you know, when it mattered most, when he was right there, he came through. And so Eli's legend. Yeah. What, what, what's the number one thing you hate about Philadelphia? Uh. Well, listen, you know, my guys, a matter of fact, I would have been in Philly today, actually. Let my people smoke. Anthony Renzulli, Twin Smoke Shop, Tent and Tasco, all my guys. I love them all. I love hanging out in that place. I don't do it enough. Number one thing I hate about Philly is when they beat us, the way they beat us. You know, it's, uh, I get still nightmares of Deshaun running back that kick. 
uh, McNabb picking up the phone, uh, you know, all those things uh, irked me to no end. That's fantastic. Now, it's mostly football. Phillies, we don't really get to see. You know, we beat them. Um, uh, Flyers, eh, you know, Dave Schultz and Vic Hatfield, you know, sitting there with Dale Ralph. I mean, that too, that's uh, always uh, bothered me. And the Sixers, you know, Sixers are low on my, uh, you know, my sports thing. So it's Eagles. You're a great sportsman, man. Like you really can't go deep. I, I got to ask you, so I watch, so I rewatched, I don't know how many times you probably get this, but with the 25th anniversary recently of the Sopranos, we went and rewatched, my wife and I rewatched the entire series and it, it's just so brilliant. Like when you, and it's fun to kind of rewatch it again because um, it feels fresh again, and it's it's just so brilliant. And your character, like the scene of you outside Yankee Stadium, is one of the great scenes of all time. You know, uh, so funny thing about that is, is that I was a. Uh, I knew we had to do that scene. They called me up, and I had people coming to my house to watch the Yankees Red Sox playoffs and they go joe we're going to shoot that scene i go i know you know we got to come in and goes no we're going to shoot it today i go are you kidding me i got people coming over this is a playoff game they go we're going to get it we're not having a film we're just going to have you and the camera i go i have people coming and they said listen we'll get you to the game we'll get you in the game i said okay so about second inning everybody's in my two friends are walking behind me into the stadium and uh, we shot that. I went to go see the game. I was sitting behind home plate. The next night, boom, hit that home run. But when I was there, I was like, oh, this is unbelievable. We're going to clinch down against the Sox. And so every time I see that scene, I think of that um, that time when I, you know, what happened in that game. That was a great scene. I was, uh, you know, Finn left me hanging at the bat. <laughs> what, how did you get the get that part? I mean, it was... And you, the ascent of your character was amazing. I mean, like David Chase at character development is, is it's just brilliant at how he took you and then made you this big character uh, in the show with, well, it, with its arc. I think I've said it on your, your show before, Ant, but for those who don't know the story, so I'll be very quick. Season one, I'm a different character. I walk yeah. into the bakery, right? I was Gino trying yes. to get Brady and Christopher throws me out. He shoots the kid in the foot. They brought me back as Vito. Why? I guess they recognized talent into three lines that I had in that scene. So, uh, uh, you know, season two, couple episodes here and there. I'm Richie April's nephew. I built the ramp for Beansy. Season three, I get to kill Jackie Jr., which was big. Season finale, that's cool. Season four, I'm reading a book called Murder Machine about the Roy DeMeo uh, crew in Brooklyn killing guys. And they just released one of those guys, Anthony sent there after 35 years. Wow. They killed like over 60 guys up in, uh, they had this bar called the Gemini lounge. And, um, they had an apartment upstairs. They'd kill them in there, bring them upstairs, cut them up in the bathtub, drain the blood. One of his guys in his crew was gay. And then the light bulb went off and I go, wow, that's kind of interesting. You never hear them see that in a mob. Um, so I brought it to the attention of one of the writers and I go, look, this is interesting. You never see it. And I'd be willing to do it. Um, so I wanted to prove the, you know, self-taught chef, self-taught actor. I wanted to prove I can act to myself, to the cast. And I wanted a challenge, you know, playing a wise guy where I grew up, where you grew up, South Philly, you see those guys, you know, their mannerisms, how they talk, what they, you know, so uh and that's why i suggested it and thank god they did it it changed my life um and um yeah so i i i got lucky being in the right place right time i'm blessed i always thank god every day trust me and um you know what can i say so pulled it off and, and just I, to give a little what I, I mean the way you pulled it off was so impressive I gotta tell you, like the whole, you know, Connecticut when you when you go up to Connecticut, the Vermont, and uh, the relationship that you had, like it was so well done. It, it was you really killed the role. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And give it us always go to sports. You know what I mean. But being on that show is like being on the twenty seven Yankees, the eighty five yeah. Bears, or you know. Um, 
uh, I wish I could think of a Dominic Philly team. I can't. But <laughs> Eagles, E-A-G-L-E-S. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm going to say to that? One is the loneliest number, ain't <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I mean, what, what you what you guys accomplished? Do people still to this day? I mean, bring it, especially with the 25 year anniversary of people rewatch. I know scores of people. You know, you have young people watching it for the first time. You have people rewatching it. it it's one of those pantheon shows that just lives on in its own kind of way. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, listen, it's been off the air, what, like 18 years. Kids weren't even born when it came out in 99. And um, I have my own vodka came out with. Um, I'm involved in different things. NFL products I have licensed. They're going into Lowe's. Uh, I had them in Home Depot. Um, so I do a lot of appearances up, upstate and around Syracuse, uh, wherever I go. You know, I'm a chef. I do private cooking. I do cooking in restaurants. So many kids come up to me and say, you know, I'm just watching it now. I'm in college. Um, it, it's great. And so 17, 18, 19, and plus everyone else, you know, did you see the movie? The same point. Did you see the movie? What did you think? What happened at the end? You know, the final episode. Um, those questions still happen. So it's amazing. And the show holds up. You know, it doesn't look dated. It's got great production value. So um, it's – and when I do these parties at people's houses – they, and most of the time they have the show on, they show it, you know, and people are watching it, no sound, you know, it's, it's like 18, 20, 24 people in the house. But I get a glimpse of it because I don't really sit home and watch it. But right. I, I look up, you know, when I'm not working, I'm talking to people and it brings back memories of, you know, I can't even forget some of the stuff that where I was and what happened. That stuff in New Hampshire was uh, Booton, New Jersey, where we yes, shot. Okay, New Hampshire, right. Oh, my God. That's why. Yeah. Who yeah. who was the most authentic character? Because I always thought uh, Phil Leotardo yeah. was the uh, he, he like I I grew up I've seen him like a million times like his mannerisms you know of course he goes yeah. back to the Billy Bats role and the whole thing. Well, he looked like it. You know, he looked like he w would be. You know. Like George Raft would, you know, yeah. George Raft looked like yeah. that. But the guy that was in the life was Tony Sirico, Walnuts. Yeah, yes, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you know, he looked like it, talked like it, acted like it. He wasn't that far from, like, you know, what he saw on screen. I mean, he was an old school guy, you know, and he grew up where I grew up in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Um, yeah, he was, he was the real deal. All right, two last things, because people are asking on the, on the chat board. Your what's your drink of choice when you're out, and you as a chef, what's your favorite meal to cook, and what is your favorite meal to order? Mm. Okay, a couple things. So I'm in the vodka business now, and uh, I was a Johnny Walker Black guy on the rocks, and uh, you know when I go, I go. So I was usually uh, you know a shot and a beer. I drink to forget it. Um, so, but now it's vodka, and my vodka is called Rocca Vodka, uh, made from grapes, imported from Spain. When I was cooking, when I was a chef, you know, my cooking background is French, really. I lived in New Orleans for four years. Wow. Bef yeah, before I even went to New Orleans, uh, it was really French because, again, and I even had that with me. I knew Italian because I'm Italian. We grew up with Italian food. I wanted to do something different. I have a, a you know, bigger repertoire. I could do French. I could do Italian. So I'm a fan of all cuisines. I like sauces. I'm a sauce guy. So whatever I order, I always try to get different sauces. I always ask the waiter, the chef, you know what I'm saying? I want to taste your sauces. I was a saucy, yeah. Wow, Making different really? sauces. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. fascinating. So, <laughs> so uh, and I, I know because they didn't make, at Coco Van, there you go. You know, a great um, I, traveled, I traveled through France, all the through south of France, and you know, those great kitchens when I was like 21. Um, wow. Uh, um, when I go, and like Anthony's wife, Renzuli, makes a beautiful, I'm not going to call it gravy, a crab sauce. Yes. And it's delicious. I do love crab sauce. To me, that's the Cadillac of the pasta sauces, macaroni over that. 
Uh, but I, and I, I'll put my clam sauce against anybody's. And I got a rule when I do my parties, no cheese. And sometimes I catch them sneaking it under the table because I go around looking. And they go, it puts me in a bad mood. I go, you put cheese on my, my that's, yeah. that's my clam sauce. It's right. fresh. What do you think? It came out of Progresso. You open up the can. What's wrong? <laughs> what are you doing? So uh, I get into a little problem now. House. I have yeah, no, no cheese. cheese. I do the seven fishes Christmas Eve. I make a crab gravy, right? Because we call it crab gravy, <laughs> right? So I do my, and I, I, and I say it all the time. There's no, cheese does not go on seafood. Like you don't do the grated cheese on seafood. It's too strong of a flavor and it takes away from, like you spend all that time on your sauce. It's a standalone. Yeah. The pasta accentuates that sauce. Yeah. Uh, it's just a delicate, you know, t you know the, the, the crab or the clam. You want to taste that. Parmesan or even Romano um, or Locatelli. It's, and I love cheese. Give me red sauce. I got to have cheese. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? I got to yeah. have cheese and lots of it. I love cheese. I have it on, you know, carbonara, Alfredo, of course. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm off the macaroni. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's what I like cooking, uh, sauces. And I like all different cuisines. When I do my party, I do like 18 different appetizers. I'm always looking to do different things. Um, yeah, and, the, uh, and so I've done like over, since maybe just before COVID, I've done over 100 of these parties for uh, soprano fans that get it for their husband, their father, their brother, or just get-togethers. And uh, it's unique. I'm there 10 hours. I tell my story, which is kind of unique. I do Q&A, take pictures of everyone. So it's been great. If people want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? I, you know, they usually get Facebook, Instagram. They Google. They email me. <clears throat> yeah, that's what kind of like it happens. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty book. God bless you, man. You know, you know what's funny when you brought up I, and the fact that you you cook French that you is is so fascinating. There's a great scene in Donnie Brasco. Right where uh, Lefty, the Al Pacino character, is making Coco Van, and <laughs> he's like, "Everybody makes Monagot, Monagot, Monagot. We make Coco Van here." And, and it was like Christmas Day, and he's making a Coco yeah. Van, not the Monagot. You know, it's not the first time I see Pacino like in the kitchen, and you could tell, you could see a guy where if he handles a knife, the way he handles the knife, or the way he picks up a pan. And, you know, if he's got a saute, you always pick it up with a rag. And if he's got to flip it, you know, and, you know, do the old flip. Uh, he's not spent too much time in the kitchen, I can tell you that. <laughs> as, great as, as great as he's been. <laughs> but he's making Coco Van, you know. <laughs> Last thing, and I've, I've asked you this before, but uh, the late, great James Gandolfini, what was his, what was the presence? What was it like working with him? And what was his presence like off screen? You know, I mean, I was not very close to Jimmy, but I had a, several different things. And I always tell people I had the pleasure of watching Jimmy act and Mariano pitch the ninth inning. I always tell people. Wow, that. that's awesome. But Jimmy uh, came to my restaurant to meet fans and all the actors were coming and they come once a month. Um, I had a different guy and he wanted to know, Hey, how come you haven't asked me? I go, Jimmy, you're so busy, uh, you know, working these long days and there's so much pressure on you. I don't want to bother. He goes, no, everybody's having fun. I want to come. He did that. He came to my wedding, brought his son, said beautiful things. They all did. Um, he, uh, when I suggested it for my role and then I found out that they were doing it. It's not the way I had envisioned it. I was on the wrong end of that DJ. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> so he came over to me. He goes, listen, if you're not comfortable doing this, I said, Jimmy, you know, again, that's not what I envisioned. I'm on the wrong end. But I kind of suggested it. And if they don't just do it and forget about it, um, you know, like I just do it and we don't hear anything about it again. 
And they assured me that's all you're going to do. Uh, so we're going to hear about this year, but be ready next year. It's going to be a big year. So those couple of things, you know, really uh, stayed with me forever. I said, this guy's, you know, the best. And of course, being a regular guy, a Jersey guy, down to earth, humble, but so talented, so gifted. And he was, you know, a, you know, a team guy. He's just a, you know, he had no airs about him. He lifted everybody up. He was there and, you know, I was just blessed to have known him and worked with him and been part of what he created. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, so. it was funny. I was, when we were rewatching it, just the way they shot it and his breathing, like you hear him breathe while the, yeah. it, it's so impactful, right? Like, yeah. It, you pick up all these little things in the depth of the character. It, it's just so. It's just such a, an incredible show. I loved your that nasally, too. the nasally way of talking, um, that breathing. Uh, you know, it just added to his character. Yeah. And my analogy of what him and Mariano. Yeah, it's fair because yeah. I covered that when I was at the Post. When I was at the New York Post, I covered that <laughs> Yankee team and. I mean, he was. I mean, when Sandman would come in, I mean that that was par excellence. Like that was amazing baseball. It really was, and he was yeah. unhittable. I mean, he was he yeah. was Dracula. Like there was no way. Yeah, yeah except for Louis Gonzalez, but I mean, we'll let that go. <laughs> Joe, what a play! Thank you for your time, man. It's so great catching I, up with you, brother. I man, we don't do it enough, man. I love you. Thank you. Good talking to you, and. Uh, you know, I'll get back to uh, Philly one day. I was at the Classic uh, um, a couple of years ago. Rangers, uh, Flyers. I was yes. seeing all the old guys I know, the Watson brothers. You know, and I know those guys, Gary Dornhofer, uh, Big Bird, uh, Clement. Uh, I could go on and on. I just knew those teams. And so this is before everybody's warming up and all the fans behind it. I was on the field. And they go, Beto, Beto, come close. We're going to get a picture. We're going to want to get a picture. I go, really? You want to get a picture? You sure? You sure? <laughs> I opened up my jacket. I had my giant shirt on. They go, and they go, you could imagine what they were saying. I go, hey, now you don't want a picture, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. Uh, that's fantastic. That's the, you're the best, brother. God bless you, man. We'll catch up soon. All right, brother. I'll see you. Be well. Be well. Be safe. You too, brother. You too. Joe Gaddis Scully, the great. Are you? We all silly like the mayor. 